Do you want to have cool LEDs like this in your bedroom and do it yourself? Watch this video. So I'm going to do a sort of series starting with a small LED setup and telling you what components I used for those. And then we're going to scale that up over a matter of a few videos. Now, this series will be more showing what I used and not so much why. I have a lot of videos about the why and how to calculate things and stuff like that. But this is mostly, if you want to do the same, get this stuff. So this is about three meters of 60 LEDs per meter of WS2812B. So five volt LED strip and 184 LEDs in total. Now, normally I'd be like, okay, you need to look in the power sheet I have with real world LED strip power usage and calculate how much amp this is going to use and stuff like that. In this case, um, it's about six to seven amps maximum for white. And that means that nominal usage for normal patterns and stuff like this is about, well, maximum three to four amps. So let's go see and how that is hooked up. It's over here in the corner, add a little light. So we start down here, where is our power socket? And you can see with the current effect, we're actually only drawing four watt. Uh, this is just an optional power meter because I like to measure stuff. We have an AC cable and I ran it through this uh, cable raceway, which I glued to the wall. And then it comes up here. And up here, we basically have a five volt, eight amp power supply, which is, as I said, and as you can calculate with the power sheet is more than enough to run these LEDs or these, um, this amount of LEDs. And then it goes into this little box. We'll look at, into that more in a little bit which then has the cables come out of it and connect to the cables on the LED strip. Easy, just plug in connector, no soldering or stuff like that. So let's take a quick look at that box because that is the controller because digital LED strip, well, it needs a data signal to tell it what to do and which LEDs to turn on to what color, you know, stuff like that. So in here is a controller, which is called a Quinn LED Dig Uno. Now this is my controller. I mean, I designed it and I sell it, or you could build it yourself actually. Okay, that's out of the box enough. So what I did from this five volt, eight amp power supply, I snipped off the plug at the end because those are generally very power limiting. And I took the plus and minus wire and I feed it into the board. If you don't know what the plus and minus wire is, you take a multimeter and I advise everyone to get a multimeter. You can get one for a few bucks and you can measure which is plus and minus plugged into the board. Now, why use this board and not just the ESP8266 uh, or ESP32 you can plug in here because you can use those directly for smaller projects like this. But this board adds some nice stuff. It has a level shifter uh, on board to make sure the data signal is okay. It adds screw terminals where you can actually screw in the wires that you need to attach instead of just, I don't know, having them hanging in the air. And then it has five volt, 12 volt compatibility. It's not really important for this project, but it can be useful for longer projects. It has an onboard fuse giving you at least somewhat a, a bit of protection. If something goes wrong, the fuse pops and all power is cut. So this board just makes it really easy to run the WLED software that is running doing, well, these effects. Now, as I said, I'm not going to explain everything in this video. I have a dedicated video about the WLED software and how easy it is to install and use it. 
comes with a mobile phone app with which you can select effects and control it, or you can even do it through stuff like Home Assistant and things like that. Now, as I said, this is a very simple setup. The LED strip comes with double-sided tape on the back, and as I mentioned, I'll have everything linked in the description, like the exact stuff I used here. And since it's digital LED strip, you can just stick it down like that. It doesn't really need extra cooling. You can use an aluminium profile for diffusion, but the way I have it set up here is basically that I use this uh, slanted roof line to catch the uh, emission from the LEDs, I guess, which already provides a bit of diffusion. And especially when the room is dark, makes for a very nice effect throughout the whole room. Then there is next to the power supply, you plug in the cables that go to the LED strip. But this little pigtail cable, so if I, uh, I'm not sure I'm gonna be, no, I'm not be able, gonna be able to disconnect that with one hand. But these you get with the LED strip, so you can just screw that in and then click it into the LED strip and you're done. Now, this is a very simple setup, but it's also very simple to do. And uh, as I said, I have lots, loads of video explaining all kinds of other stuff, but I just wanna take you through small setup to bigger setups in videos uh, to show you examples of well, how it's applied. Now, as I said, we're going to do multiple setups and this is basically the simplest one. I'll call this partial room LEDs. And in the end, it's very simple. If you're only using about 150 or so five volt WS2812B LEDs, you don't need to worry about power injection or any of the other complicated things we'll look at in follow-up videos. This is just a strip cut to length because it was a five meter or 16 feet strip and now it's three meters or whatever says it says on the screen and just a single power supply with a single feed-in point running through a Quinn LED Dig Uno board which has some fuse protection and other measures that make things easier to hook up and then runs the excellent WLED software. Again, if you wanna do this yourself, look at the links in the description. There will be much more videos and pages explaining stuff. Some will be a bit technical, but there's also a WLED Discord server and there's an intermittent technology Discord server where there's lots of people who can help you out if you wanna build your own setup. And well, that's it already for this video, really. Again, all links in the description. If you buy all that stuff, you can build this very easily yourself. No soldering required, just screwing it in. That's it. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching and uh, catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.